Okay, so now it's time to uncover our crop. I added some supplemental videos earlier, so you'll get to take a look at uh, the progress here. So, first thing I do is I check my records. And my optimum uncover date, or my hopeful uncover date, was November the 6th. It is now November the 7th, so it's taken an extra day. And I think I discussed that there was a good possibility that this would be a longer crop because it's a little bit cooler in here. So cooler conditions are going to have slower growth, but so far I'm really, really happy with the growth I've got. So we're going to take a look at things there. So I checked my records. I've made a note of my actual uncover date, and I'm done with this here. So now we're going to uncover things here. So we can kind of take a look in here. We know it's time to uncover for a couple of reasons. So what we can see is the tray has been pushed up. We can clearly see growth underneath. And the tray has actually been pushed a little over to the side. And this to me is a sign I've waited a little bit too long. And in the videos preceding this that I did throughout the day, this would have been ideally uncovered this morning. And then I would have put it into the light. But the reality is the day got away from me and I didn't have a chance to do that. So it's still fine. My general rule is to uncover early as opposed to late. Uh, you're almost always going to get better results with that. But in this case, I'm still within a good window, so we're looking good to go. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my weights off here. So if you remember, each of these blocks is 15 pounds. I suspect some of you are like, there's no way there's 30 pounds in there. I'm going to take this off. This is my covering tray, and this is out of the way. So, so this is my tray. I'm going to bring it here to take a look. So one of the things you're going to notice about this tray is it's very, very uniform in its germination uh, and its size. And this is one of the things that that, that weight does on there. So just a review. The weight and the, the, the tray on top, they keep the light out. You can see we don't have any photosynthesis. We have a little bit of greening up on the sides, as you might suspect, um, but it keeps things in the dark. Now, we eventually want things to photosynthesize, but not for too long because photosynthesis starts to create bitter compounds, and that's something we don't want. The pressure keeps the seed in good contact with the soil, so there's good moisture transmission into the seed. Uh, and then the pressure, yeah, it gives you a stronger stem, and it makes the growth more even, so it evens out if there's any irregularities in growth. What you probably can't tell from this, but I can tell from looking at it, is there is a little bit of a bend. So instead of the, the shoots coming straight up, they're kind of coming like this. And this is a consequence of leaving the, the weight on for too long. I'm not particularly worried about it, but if that was commercial production, I'd be losing a bit of yield or I'd be losing a bit of efficiency because it would actually be a little more effort to... Um, to, to cut those. So that's one reason I like to co uh, cover things, uncover things early as opposed to later. So I'm going to place this here. So these have been under there for six days. So you can see, I can tell by the weight of the tray, there's still good moisture in there. But I want more moisture in there. Now, one thing you may notice about uh, your microgreens, as you may notice about other plants, is they tend to do well when you have moving water. So, constantly adding water, or regularly adding water, is favorable for growth. So, as a general rule, my strategy is going to be underwatering. So I'm going to put water into this tray, I'm going to let the soil soak it up, and that's how most of my watering is going to happen. A lot of people don't like to top water. But I do, and one of the reasons is uh, it's actually a chance for you to wash your crop. Because with some crops, when we cut them, we, we cut them and we package them and that's it. We don't go through a washing and a spinning cycle. And so we want to have a cleaning process and that can actually happen while the crop is growing. Because I'm in slightly cooler conditions indoors, uh, I'm not going to need a lot of water for these crops. One watering, maybe two is going to do it. But I do want a top watering here. This is a fairly clean crop but I do want to give it a good watering. So this is how I'm going to start. I'm just going to give this a good watering here. And I'm doing it on this tray, not because I want it to be soaking up water, but because I don't want the water to be spilling all over my kitchen table. So what I'm doing now, I'm kind of lifting that up. I'm getting a feel for what that tray looks like, what that feels like. So that's a habit you should really get into, is when you lift up a tray, 
after a while you should intuitively know how much water is actually in there. So I'm doing that because, to be honest, I've not been doing a lot of production lately, and so I want to get more familiar with what a, what a heavier tray looks like. So now I've uncovered, I've got my, uh, everything is exposed, uh, and now I'm going to put it into the light cycle. Now it's 7 o'clock at night, so this is about the time when my lights would be turning off. So these have been uncovered, but they're still basically going to stay in, in, in fairly dark conditions. They're going to get a little bit of ambient light here, they'll start to green up a little bit. But it's not going to be until the morning when my lights come on on the timer that they're going to get their first light. So now I'm going to take it from my germination shelf, which was down here, I'm going to put it onto my growing shelf, which is up here. And I talked earlier about positioning here. So in some of my previous videos I talked about how close should your crop be to the light. And the rule of thumb I gave everybody was about a hand's width. And so if I put this in here I can see that's a little bit more. I could probably put another tray under there but I'm pretty happy with that. I have two, two ballasts here. I've got a, I've got a bulb that's uh, really got a really high K value and I'm right by a window, so I'm going to get pretty good light in there. So even though this is a little further than that amount, I'm not too worried about that. And these are going to grow very, very quickly. So I'm going to leave them there, and I'm probably going to leave them on this thing for the entire cycle. So if they get to here, I'm probably going to be okay with that. So the lights are going to come on, I believe, at 7 o'clock in the morning. They'll run most of the day until about 8 o'clock at night. So this is basically the end of our germination period. So when we look at the process, we're kind of breaking it down into your germination period and your sort of what I call the growth period or the light period. And so now we're going into our light period. Um, we are two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are six days into our growing cycle. It is November 7th. Um, and we have spent all that in the dark. I'm still hoping to add one, two, three more days and still on day 10 to be harvesting this. So... Um, I'm hoping that three days of light is going to get me the crop that I want. I have a feeling I might need an extra day uh, based on performance so far, but I have actually gotten off to a really, really good start here, and we're going to see some pretty quick growth here. Now, one of the things that I like about fluorescent lights is that they actually give off a little bit of heat. And so what you get is a little bit of a microclimate in here to make things a little bit warmer. So even though the conditions here are a little cooler, Around here it is going to be a bit warmer, which as I say that makes me think, huh, maybe I will put another tray up there so these are nice and close to there, so I'm really getting that benefit, at least for the first day or so. So I'll play around with that, I'll, I'll kind of watch this and see what kind of growth I get. Um, and yeah, I'll just be keeping on, just on a daily basis, I'll be coming in here and just lifting that up to see how heavy it is. Uh, there's a chance I may not even water this again, it might be fine. Um, but probably I'll do at least one watering with the tray there. So this is the end of the uh, germination stage and what we'll do is we'll keep an eye on this. I'll do some supplementary videos so we can look at uh, added greening up. We can kind of follow that and then the next time we look at this in depth will be for the harvest.